Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to episode 105 of Game Programming. So today we're going to talk about random targeting. So we have a shooter mob right now. If we launch our game, just so you guys can see where it's at. You can see that uh, if I move over here, um, these mobs, right? These two of the shooters, this, uh, this top one here and the bottom one, they both target the closest mob that's to them. So if I move over here, for example, you can see they're going to target me. And then if I move out of range, you can see this one here is actually targeting the one that's just to its left, not me because the left one is obviously closer. Um, and then uh, you can see that the accuracy is uh, pinpoint here. Um, now that's great, but what if we want them to target a random mob that's in the uh, the area, right? So um, the reason that I, that I even wanna consider this is because in Realm of the Mad God, which is kind of the game that we're sort of cloning here, um, not really though, because we're gonna add a ton of stuff that's not in that game. Um, that game, uh, you know, that has random targeting, right? So it's not just going to target the closest player. Some mob, some monsters might do that, right? I explained this last episode, I think. Some, um, or in the last few episodes at least, some mobs are going to target the, the closest um, player, right? But some might not. Some might target a random player, okay? And then it might change that every now and then. So how do we actually get it to target something random? Well, what we've got right now is what I call like a closest kind of algorithm, right? This this finds the closest one. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this entire thing, right, with shoot. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to cut that. And I'm actually going to make a private uh, method here, private void shoot closest, all right? And I'm going to paste that entire thing into there, okay? And the reason that I've done that uh, let me just uh, get rid of that so you guys can see a bit more. The reason that I've done that is, um, in fact, if you double click on any tab here, you can see that like the, the shooter.java uh, class tab, if I double click on that, it's actually going to like maximize it and make it full screen. So that, that's a pro tip for you guys if you didn't know that. Um, so this shoot closest, right? That's going to shoot the closest entity. And that, that's, that's all it's going to do, right? So if you want to run that, you simply uh, type in shoot closest and that's what will be done, right? So if I launch it now, of course, it's gonna um, it's gonna work as it did before. Now let's uh, let's not run that method. Let's instead uh, go uh, shoot random, okay? And we're gonna make that method now, obviously. So private void shoot random. This is largely gonna be very very similar to um, to this shoot closest method. Uh, in fact, I'm just gonna copy and paste this entire thing into here, and then we're gonna edit it, okay? So first of all, yeah, we do need this uh, entities with the client player. We need all that stuff there. Minimum distance. You know, we don't need that. Uh, closest, we might not really need that. I might call this uh, rand. We can't call it random because random is our random object. Um, and it's our instance of the random Java class. Uh, we don't need distance. We don't need this stuff. Uh, but we do need this for loop. And this, if closest, uh, we'll go if random does not equal null. Um, <clears throat> uh, we don't need this closest stuff. Um, all we do need, though, is uh, rand.getx and all that stuff. Okay? That's it. So what we're gonna edit here is this thing. Um, this is dead code currently because we never actually set random equal to anything. So don't worry about this warning, that'll go away once we actually make rand equal to a random entity. So um, what we're gonna do, right? First of all, when we're shooting a random thing, it's gonna be very, very simple, okay? We've got an array list of entities. In fact, we don't even need this for loop, okay? We've got an array list of entities. We can access any of them by going entities.get. So what we're actually going to do, right, is we're going to create our random index. And what that's going to equal is entities.size minus 1. All right? That's going to kind of be, if I just get rid of, uh, in fact, we can move this down. And I will, um, I'll explain this just in a second. So, uh, I'll come that out for now. Okay, so basically, our index is the index in the entities array at which we pull an entity, okay? Because this entities array is obviously full of entities, right? Here it is, we, we get it from the level dot get entities class. And um, the idea is that we wanna randomly pick an entity out of there, okay? Um, right now, of course, by the way, because I, I, I just know that a lot of you guys are thinking, well, isn't that gonna pull all the, all the older entities in the level? I don't wanna shoot at someone who's um, on the other side of the map, of course it won't because level.getEntities has a radius parameter, which is 500 at this point. So don't worry about that. It will pick a random entity within this radius. So we can tweak this radius to be 20, which is just pretty much um, really, really close distance. So that's like kind of sword um, melee distance, not really 
I don't know, projectile distance. Um, and then you can make it really, really large, like 10,000, and that will obviously, uh, obviously, um, shoot pretty much everything in, in our level at least, because it's small. But, um, that's the idea, right? So you can tweak this radius to be, you know, I guess the range, pretty much. Um, now, this is the index, right? So what we want to do now is kind of let us pick a random number between zero and that, okay? Because entities.size will give us the number of entities in our entities array list, okay? That's the number of entities. We go minus one because um, arrays start from zero, at least the indexes start from zero, okay? So not from one. So this gives us the, the count, but we wanna make sure that of course, if we have 10 entities, the last one is actually number nine because the first one is not one, it's zero. Um, so what we need to do then is go ahead and say random dot, whoops, random, yep, dot next int, and then we're actually gonna make it, uh, make the parameter this entities dot size. And the way that this is gonna work, very, very simply, is because random dot next int, right, this is the maximum value that that actual integer will be, okay? So in x, uh, in n is, is the, it's the, it's, um, this probably won't help you guys out immensely, but basically it's the, it's the top, okay? Uh, so if this were to be eight, this would actually pick a number um, between one and eight, oh, sorry, zero and, I think it might be actually zero to seven, but we'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and check this out though. Entities.size minus one. That will, that will pick a random uh, integer in between zero and that value. So uh, once we've done that, right, we simply have to get, get the random entity. And that'll simply be entities.get and then index, okay? Because index is that random index that we pick out. Um, there are many other ways of doing this, by the way, but this is one of the ways because there, I'll show you guys one more way in a second, but uh, that'll be a random way. Now, one thing I'm gonna note, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna let you guys know before we actually launch our application, this will actually um, do it every frame, right? There's no kind of limiting factor here. So it will, it will pick a random person to shoot to every update. Okay, so um, we're gonna see what this looks like right now. Look at that, it looks like they're shooting at everyone. <laughs> so, um, but you can see it's kind of working, right? Because it's, um, they're all kind of firing at this guy. I don't even know what's going on here. It's just, it's crazy. They're all firing at random, um, random positions and they're all changing it. So let's go ahead and tweak this just a bit because uh, this probably isn't the desired result. So what we wanna do is make some kind of, there is a time, okay? We've actually made that already, which is which is nice. But what I wanna do is I only wanna change the, uh, I guess the index that we shoot at every now and then. So what we need to do is grab the entity rand, we wanna copy that, put it up here so that it stays, of course, in between. We'll set it equal to null to begin with, which is the default anyway, but just so we enforce that. Um, and then all I want to do is, you see this rand equals basically this entire thing. I only want to do this, right, if either uh, rand, uh, actually, you know what, if, um, we don't need to do if rand doesn't equal null, or if rand equals null, because if it equals null, it's just not going to shoot anyway. So if time mod, uh, where's my mod, mod like 60, maybe once per second equals zero, then we're going to do this entire little spiel here, okay? Otherwise, um, you know, we're, we're just not going to change our rand ever, okay? So let's go ahead and check that out and see what's going on here. Okay, so you can see that this guy here is kind of changing who he's shooting at. So one time he's shooting at this guy, another time he's shooting at this guy, and we get that entire kind of notion going on. See, he's changing, Um, he's just randomly changing it once per second, okay? And that's what's going on here. Now, the other thing that's probably on your guys' mind is why is the player never getting picked? Yeah? We can always see that this is going on, but the player just never kind of, never gets never gets shot at. And that's because um, this random.nextint method, as I mentioned earlier, doesn't actually count up to uh, to the top value. That's like the, it's kind of, it works kind of like an array, right? So if we actually put in eight, we will get a random number from zero to seven inclusive, okay? So what that is, is the range, right? That is eight total numbers starting from zero, okay? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's eight values. So because of that, we don't actually go ahead and say, 
uh, um, entities uh, dot get oh, sorry entities dot size minus one we actually don't need the minus one there okay I just wanted you guys to uh, to see that because um uh, normally you would do that though that's why, that's why I wanted to point it out it's just that this next int method just do, does, kind of does that for you okay which honestly I don't think it should do but it does because that's just the way that the Java people have written it but um, keep in mind that if you're doing a for loop or whatever and you don't want the uh, that's why the that's why it's really important just just really quickly uh, that's why it's really important to note that you know how you go when you make a for loop you go ahead and you say I is less than um, and then like entities dot size and that works fine that's because I never actually equals this okay I is always because as soon as I is it this only works if I is less than that right so um, if I is less than equal to that right that's how that's how it works okay um, so basically what you need to realize is in like a for loop of course I never actually reaches this value it doesn't because if it were to equal it suddenly then that wouldn't be less than right that the boolean expression of less than would not be true and it wouldn't run um, so that's just something that's really important to note. So now that we do go entities to size, and the reason that the player is always the last index is because first we pull the entities and then we obviously add the, add the player onto the end of the entities array list. So let's check that out. Um, now the player should get picked every now and then. You can see, I think that's that's us he's shooting at. Yep, and you can see that they kind of they just randomly change um, all that stuff. Now, one more quick thing is um, I think. Uh, Yes, I was, going to, I was just going to say that um, if you guys wanted to mod it or something, as in like change the mod, not actually like modify it, but change the modulus um, thing, you could just simply add a random not next int, uh, like 60 for example, and then it would go ahead and say, um, it will start at 0, this will be 59 actually, so that's another thing to know, if you actually want it to be between 0, zero and 60, you'd have to add 61. Uh, that's actually one of the reasons I don't like the next int method very much, but um, what I'm saying is that... Uh, Basically, um, anywhere from, um, let's just say, one second to two seconds, anywhere in that range, it will actually... Um, where did I put the second bracket? Oh, no, that's fine. Um, anywhere between one, and one to two seconds, it will change direction, right? So you can kind of tweak that a bit, maybe even bring this to 30, this to 90, and then that'll basically make sure that anywhere between half a second and two seconds, uh, you'll actually get a direction switching, and that'll be a bit more uh, realistic. Half a second might be not enough. It might be a bit really abrupt. So we'll wait for this guy to shoot us. There we go. So you can see it's kind of cool, right? In the sense that he can kind of change direction really, really quickly. And he can like fire just a few shots at us and then go back to someone else, right? So that's random targeting, all right? I did tell you that I would show you one more way to shoot randomly. Um, and that is you don't need this uh, stuff anymore. I'll quickly show you guys this. We're probably not going to use this technique uh, just because I think it's probably going to be a bit slower and it actually messes um, up a bunch of stuff. But what we could do is... Uh, is do it this way instead. Um, if I just copy this really quickly as well, we can just say that if um, if uh, entities dot size, we have to move this out uh, here. So we we don't need the time stuff here. But if entities dot size is greater than zero, so in other words, if the entities array isn't empty, because of course it can be. If where if our mob is out somewhere in like the wilderness and there aren't any mobs around it in that radius, then yeah, and that there's not then this uh, list will be empty. Um, but if it's not empty, uh, we'll go ahead and shoot, and the person that we will shoot at will actually be um, uh, our random entity, kind of, will actually be equal to. I brought that with me. Um, Rand will actually be equal to entities dot get zero, okay. So that'll always get the first entity. But um, you guys might be like, well, okay, isn't the first entity always going to be the same? And yeah, it will be. But what we run before that, um, which out, well up here actually, is we actually run collections static method collections dot shuffle, and then we feed in the entities uh, list. All right, so that will shuffle it into random order. If I just go ahead and uh, do this thing really quickly, you can see that um. They'll actually, they'll actually, you can see they're actually only firing one shot at us <laughs> every now and then. But um, it will actually, it'll shuffle it and it'll fire randomly, okay? And you can see a few shots are fired at this guy as well. Um, they are preferring uh, each other a lot, but um, that's just the way that that works, all right? Because, and the reason that's happening is because we're only shuffling every now and then 
Um, so what we'd need to do is kind of uh, we'd have to tweak a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff to get that to work. So basically, if we were to bring this outside, it would be um, shuffling it every frame, and you can see that that is truly random. Okay. Anyway, we're not going to do it this way just because that does actually change the change the. Um, well, I I, I I guess it just kind of changes the order of our entire collection and we might want to keep it in a, in a particular order. Um, so I'm just going to reset that quickly to what it was, but that's just, you know, just for your guys, I guess, um, information, just another way of doing it. So that collections.shuffle is uh, quite, um, quite good. All right. So uh, entities.size, I think everything's right. Then we just need to set rand. We need to set rand equal to... Um, uh, entities dot get index and that is um I think that's it that should work now who are you shooting at okay almost worked did I forget something this should be outside I think that's the only thing I've got. All right. Okay, so that's pretty much how that random method will work. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. Um, next time we're going to take a look at creating a debug kind of display, uh, purely for being able to draw, um, actually draw debug information, not just text, onto the screen because we're going to need that in the future. And then hopefully we'll move on to some more interesting stuff. But that debug stuff is really, really important and I can't wait to, to get that down because it'll help us out with um, pretty much all future de future development. So anyway if, you, anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode, uh, please hit the like button. Um, don't forget that I actually offer a private tutoring little thing going on. So if you guys want to learn Java or you want to learn this... Uh, if there's anything that you guys basically want to learn in the realm of either this tutorial or anything to do with Java or C++, um, if you guys are just starting out in those languages and uh, and you need some guidance and you want to you want to learn how to um how to do that basically, um, then feel free to uh, to book a tutorial here. Um, my available times are listed in this calendar. Basically, you just have to fill out this form, pick uh, the time here, and pick pick how long you want the uh, the, to the tutorial to go for. So. 15, 30, or 60 minutes, um, and uh, that's pretty much it. And just type in what you want to learn here. And uh, and out of the, out of the people who have taken this, by the way, so far, there's been like a hundred percent recurrence. So everyone who's everyone everyone who's had a tutorial, like, basically wants another one. So they've been really successful, and um, and I, it's really awesome that I can actually help people out face to face. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow with another episode. Goodbye.